Hello everyone, I am Sanket Singh and welcome back to my channel. So guys, this is going to be a very interesting video. If you remember on the channel, I actually already posted a couple of videos where I talked about how I actually coded our own lead code as well as kind of like a clone of the Git version control system. Now I'm back with another video on the project series where I will talk about that, how I actually coded my own cab aggregator or I would say cab booking service like Uber. So Uber is something that a lot of you guys might have used or at least heard that how exactly things work in Uber. Uber is one of the most famous cab services and not just in India, but across the globe, you will find a lot of users who are actually using Uber. In a lot of system design interviews, you might be asked to actually design a system that is very close to what Uber actually does. And that's what I took as a challenge. We actually coded an end-to-end backend of the Uber application in two of our cohorts. That is, one was the Spring Boot cohort and one was uh, the actually Lambda 3.0 cohort. In both of these, once in Spring Boot and then once in Node.js, we actually coded the complete backend of Uber. In this, we actually coded and focused on one particular feature that is you, uh, riders are able to update their location and we are able to actually request a ride. Somebody is able to actually accept the ride like there are let's say five riders who are actually prompted which are the nearby drivers and they are actually prompted and then they actually accept the ride and we can actually create a booking for them. So this was the main feature that we actually focused on and to code this application we actually took some real life applications. We actually used some technologies that are actually very useful in actually coding things like Uber. So the main problem of uh, I would say this whole project was to actually handle geolocation databases yes so how to handle geolocation data like the latitude and longitude was something that was the main challenge here and for that we actually use the redis geolocation db which internally handles all the geospatial indexing and you can actually query all the nearby i would say locations within a particular range within a particular radius and so on so this is a very interesting project and I'm going to help you go through that what exactly were the things that we actually used and how we actually coded them. I'm going to show you the services that we actually coded. So this is going to be a fun ride and I'm really excited to share this whole project process with all of you guys. That being said, without any further delay, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing to the channel. We are going to put some really awesome content coming up ahead on this channel. So let's just start. So before moving forward, I would like to discuss about a brand new offering that we have at AlgoCamp. So if you are somebody who already knows software development and are very much intrigued by the crazy amount of stuff that you can actually develop using the knowledge of your software development, then this is going to be something interesting for you. So if you are somebody who loves to take deeper dive into everything and wants to understand that how exactly scalable systems are developed, not just on the high level part, but on the low level coding implementation part as well, then we have actually launched our brand new system design course, which which includes both the low level design aspect and the high level design aspect of the scalable systems. In this particular course, with respect to HLD, we are going to talk about a lot of systems, including system design of things like Uber, streaming systems like Netflix, how you can actually design your own ad click aggregator, how you can design scalable notifications, how you can design code deployment systems and many more. There are tons and tons of high level design problems that we have added. Apart from that, there are a lot of interesting system design concepts that we have actually added, including design patterns like Saga pattern, anti-corruption layer pattern. We have also added orchestration pattern and some other interesting aspects around caching layer, blob storages and whatnot. This is going to be a power packed course for high level design. And along with that, there is low level design as well, where we are going to talk about solid principle. We are going to talk about tons and tons of different design patterns. And we are going to solve a lot of problems, including designing your own logger, designing kind of like a chess game, designing kind of like a book my show system, a split wise and whatnot. This low level design part is going to technically prepare you for any kind of a low level design or object oriented interview, as well as for your machine coding interviews as well. This is going to be be a definitely a power packed live course where we are going to talk about everything end to end in system design and we have also added some additional topics around concurrency and testing as well so what are you waiting for all the details about this particular course is actually mentioned in the description section below go there check it out and use this particular coupon code to actually get the maximum possible discount and see you guys in the course that being said let's go back to the video 
Okay, so let's start talking about the design of our Uber project and let's see the coding implementation. I'll show you a couple of functions uh, that we have technically implemented. It's a microservices based architecture. So the, so the first and most important service that we have is a service discovery, right? Why do we need a service discovery? Because we need to ensure that all the microservice doesn't need to like remember on which particular address they are, the other services are technically hosted. So for that, we have a service discovery. We have used the Netflix Eureka server. If you technically come up here, uh, this is the service discovery. You can see there is a Netflix Eureka configuration that I have added. And for this, we have technically just added the Netflix Eureka server dependency and we have our service discovery up and running. Now, after that, the uh, other more important services is our booking service. Okay. So we have one booking service. The booking service is kind of like the service, which is going to get uh, the request from the client whenever we want to create a particular booking. So if I go to the booking service here, you can see this is the booking service. You can see inside the booking service. If I go to the controllers, right, you can see there is a create booking method. This create booking controller method actually calls a service method booking service dot create booking. This is the interface for booking service and the implementation of this interface is up here. Okay. So you can see this is the create booking method. This is the create booking method. What it does is it technically create uh, takes a booking DTO, right? Create booking DTO. And from that, that DTO, first of all, because we are going to get the passenger ID because passenger actually raised the booking request that they want to go from one place to another. So they fetch the passenger details. We fetch the passenger details using the passenger repository, right? And then we create a booking object. This booking object we create with a assigning driver status. So we have a periodic status update. Whenever something new happens with the booking, we change the status. Okay. And we set the start location altogether. Okay. Now what we do is we create, we just save this booking inside our database. And then we try to actually request for nearby drivers because how exactly Uber works. When you raise a ride request, you tell where from where you want to go at a particular location and what's the end location altogether. And then you raise a request, all the nearby drivers at your current starting location are actually notified that there is a new ride coming up ahead. Do you, do you want to take up that ride or not? Okay. So you can see, I have created a DTO nearby driver request DTO, and then this DTO is getting passed in the process nearby driver async method. So we have implemented an async method altogether, and then we just return the booking response DTO that we are actually requesting the new driver. So what we can technically do is we can go to this process nearby driver async. Now inside this method, you can see I have implemented this method using, is using retrofit. If you want, you could have used any other API calling library as well. Now here, what I do is I actually make a call to location service API. So now there is a different microservice called as a location service. This location service is actually responsible for getting the nearby drivers for us based on the DTO of nearby drivers. So we have one more microservice now coming up. That is our location service. location service. Okay. So what booking service does is booking service, make a call to the location service and try to fetch the details of all the nearby drivers. If I go to the, you can see location service API dot get nearby drivers. You can see it's a retrofit with uh, a compatible interface. This interface calls this API inside location service. So you can see this is the location service. If I open the location controller, you can see there is an API post request slash nearby drivers. If you see this API, what this API technically does is it calls the location service. So this calls the service layer, which has a get nearby drivers method. You can see this is the interface for the service layer and this is the implementation. So get nearby drivers, let's scroll down. You can see get nearby drive. Now, how do we get the nearby drivers? So for storing the geospatial data, like because for every driver, we need to store the latitude and the longitude of the driver and we want to get the current latitude and the longitude of the driver. So this location service has two main responsibilities. First, it keeps the track of the latest latitude and the longitude of the driver. And it also helps you to fetch the nearby drivers to manage the locations. We have used Redis geo uh, spatial indexing and Redis geospatial database. So we technically have a Redis DB, right? We have a Redis instance up and running. Okay. We have a Redis instance up and running this location service interacts with the Redis database in order to make sure that all the latest update of the location of the driver gets updated into Redis and we can actually fetch the nearby drivers from Redis also. So how location of the drivers can get updated. You can see there is one API that I have added, which is save driver location. This API can be called from the driver's mobile phone 
right periodically you can do kind of like a periodic let's say every 30 seconds or every one minute you can update the location and this just saves the location location you can see location service dot save driver location if you see save driver location you can see what it does is it just creates a geo operation object and then inside that it adds a new geo location using the point object and gets the latitude and the longitude so this line technically adds the latest location of a particular driver inside the redis db and you can see we are using the driver id as the key and the value is the point in i would say coordinate system then you have a get nearby driver what it does is it just again calls the redis api and if i just carefully show you uh, you can see this defines the radius here and this one you can see we define a circle okay so first of all we define a geops object we define a radius object we define a circle object you can see we define a circle object right and then what we do is we get the results how we actually call geops dot radius and then we pass this circle object so all the drivers within a particular radius are actually fetched you can see this is the list of drivers that we are having we are getting some errors because we have not built the project i'll just quickly build the project so that all the dependencies get installed so that we don't see these errors and let's wait for it and you can see everything is good so you can see this actually returns us a set of strings and from that set of strings this is kind of like the uh, i would say uh, redis key value pair that we are technically getting back from that redis key value pair we are actually fetching the details of the driver and then we are preparing a driver location dto and we are actually adding that to a list of drivers and we are returning the list of driver so this is the function that is technically fetching all the nearby drivers once we have these nearby driver fetched this api actually returns that as a response that response goes back to the booking service so technically redis gives you back the nearby drivers location service returns back all the nearby drivers back to the booking service okay and this is kind of like a synchronous communication that we are having if you want uh like you can set up an asynchronous communication as well but i felt like that we could have a synchronous communication setup as well you can have if you want you can have a kafka uh i would say queue setup or maybe if you don't want to go into kafka you can just have let's say rabbit mq queue setup and then for every new booking request you can add an uh, object in the queue the location service can service can pick up that object create the response and send that back so asynchronous uh, communication mechanism you can also set up coming back coming back if i go back to the booking service you can see we get the nearby drivers once we get the nearby drivers what we are technically going to do is this okay you can see if the response is successful we go to each driver we go to each particular driver right and then we raise a ride request you can see there is a method raise ride request async inside this method what we do is we because now riders are going to use a mobile phone so what we are doing is we are actually using uh if i carefully show you there is a socket service as well there is a uber socket service that we have prepared which actually sets up a socket connection between the server and the mobile phone of the driver whatever driver id we get we are going to raise a new message or we are going to send a new message via web sockets to that driver's mobile phone or let's say web interface whatever they have logged in with and they can accept or reject a ride so you can see there is a uber socket api dot raise ride request and we send a request dto if i open this you can see this is again a retrofit call and this is the ride request dto which has a passenger id driver id and a booking id now what we do is we go to the uber socket service so um i believe i must have opened it uh review service or service let's uh, close the review service there is a review service as well that just maintains reviews of a particular ride we don't want that so let me open uh, the socket server okay so this is the socket server and if you carefully see there is a couple of set of apis right so let's see what we are hitting from booking service so from booking service um if i go to apis okay we are hitting the slash new ride api so you can see if i go to slash new ride this is the slash new ride api okay what this slash new ride re, uh, api does is it actually calls this method send drivers ride request which takes the request dto and then you can see this is a method which is technically making the web socket call right you can see this is calling simple messaging template dot convert and send and this is technically sending a web web api uh, i would say web socket request altogether to ensure that we are able to set up the web socket connection properly if i open the build dot gradle file you can see we are actually uh using spring boot startup web socket okay and if i come back so this actually 
just sends a request to the driver that hey uh, there is a new ride request would you like to accept that okay and that's it this flow technically completes now once this flow is complete and our rider accepts that ride you can see i have synchronized this method for ride response the driver is going to give you the right response we are going to update the booking uh, get a update booking request detail and from this socket server we are going to make a uh, kind of like a kafka request so if you carefully see we create a update booking request detail and then inside kafka we actually publish kind of like publish a method this is kind of like a sample implementation that i have done for like either you can make this again this implementation asynchronous or synchronous just for demonstration purpose i added this but for now we do not need this you can see this particular call makes the synchronous request to our booking service so that we can update the ride details that hey a rider has accepted your uh, i would say uh, ride request and this is the allocated rider that you have and now you can start whenever they reach you can start the ride you can make this a synchronous communication or you can make it an asynchronous communication maybe using something like kafka so what happens is that once the booking request gets the location details then all the drivers are actually sent a websocket request for that we make an api call to our websocket service so you can say there is a uber socket server okay there is a uber uber socket server this uber socket server technically makes websocket messages to all the mobile clients of the drivers right so all the mobile clients of the drivers are actually made some requests so it's kind of like a persistent connection so i'm denoting it like this and if any driver actually accepts the ride then what this uber socket server does is it actually makes an api call to the booking service and updates our booking right all of these booking details and everything are actually stored inside a mysql instance this is actually stored inside a mysql instance okay and it actually communicates with the mysql instance to update all the booking details and everything right if you want these communications to have to have been asynchronous there is a dedicated kafka setup as well that i have done if you want to opt in for you can definitely do that and this is a simple one flow where the user can actually raise a request fetch the nearby drivers raise a request to the drivers to actually either accept or reject a ride and then once they have done they update the booking now you can add more features to it for example you can actually like because of the fact that we are storing the latest location of the drivers if you see the location service if i just quickly open the location service here you can see there's a save driver location api so we always have the latest driver location so on the ui you can also always keep on beeping that okay the driver is reaching kind of like near to you so you can get ready for the ride because nowadays uber technically sends you a notification that your rider is about to reach at your location get ready for your next uber ride so this is something that you can do and to make sure that because a lot of microservices were actually sharing the same data models right uh, what i did is i actually kept kind of like a library a common library we prepared right and inside this common library we kept all the models and then we installed these li this library as a dependency this is one way that you can use or you can have like separate if you want to have like separate db for every service if that that is the case that your like project needs you can even do that for our case uh, we just created a common library called as entity service here all of our models are done because of this fact that we were using the same mysql db for maintaining everything and the redis db for the location part so we created kind of like an entity service where we have all of our models present all of these services are actually available on my github repo you guys can go and check that out and let me know in the comments if you have some more thoughts what improvement you can technically do this was kind of like a project that i wanted to make to make sure that people don't just read the system design of over they are actually able to do some hands on try to actually get their hands dirty on geolocation spatial databases and so on there are other solution as well right postgres uh, sql also provides a geospatial solution firebase using firebase also you can do a lot of things so there are other solutions as well but redis was one thing that uh, like a lot of people are already use and like it's very widely accepted in the industry so we kind of like went on for uh, redis so like check out the all the services all of these are with the same name are available on my github repo do check it out let me know what are your thoughts and uh, if any improvements you would like to do uh, what are some alternatives you would have picked i would be happy to discuss in the comment section that being said let's wrap this particular video here i hope you like the video where we have discussed the whole coding solution of uh, uber's uh, booking request all together till then take care guys bye bye have a great week ahead i'm sanket singh signing off